talking this month about resistance, and there's a lot to be said in these days for the political impact of people who are standing up and fighting and pushing back against all of the terribly wrong things that are going on, particularly in the United States. Resistance matters. And yet, it's also true that many of us have realized that resistance can also be exhausting. Particularly when you feel like no one is listening, when the powers that be simply don't care what anyone thinks, that there's nothing that you can do to turn a tide that is so overwhelming. And then you have to figure out what to do, how to focus your resistance so that you actually feel like you are pushing and bending the arc of history towards justice. And it's hard. It's hard to stay in the battle. But there's another aspect of resistance that is, well, let's call it limiting. Because resistance, by definition, means that somebody else is setting your agenda. You're responding to something that someone else has put out in the world, pushing back against the force that is coming at you. And sometimes that force feels pretty much like a battering ram, and all of these little hands trying to shove back. But any time that your energy is going toward resistance, it's energy that isn't being spent in setting your own agenda. You can have creative ways that you resist, but resistance in itself is not a force of creation. It's a force of pushing back as opposed to a force of imagination, of possibility. And so I wonder if, in addition to resistance, there might be something else that we could pursue that would be perhaps more lifting to our spirits, more encouraging of a sense of possibility, more embracing of what it is that we want to see in the world as opposed to simply trying to fight back about, against the things that we don't want, which are so many in number, it turns out. And I don't know exactly what the word is for that action that isn't resistance. I kind of want to call it prosistance, which I know is not a word, but hey, let's try it for now. Because prosistence would be the act of making things new, of envisioning possibilities on your own and making them happen. The waves of young people and women and people of color entering politics are an act of prosistence. For instance, Charlotte, North Carolina, after all of its intense racial struggles of the past month, now has its first African-American woman mayor. Prosistence. Creating possibility. Envisioning something new. But I don't think that acts of prosistence necessarily even have to be political. I think anything that makes the world you want is an act of prosistence. I think that community choirs are prosistence and pick up basketball games where people get together to do something fun because they are together and you take whoever arrives and play the game. Community gardens are an act of prosistence. Volunteer tutors are an act of prosistence. People who bring their dogs to libraries so that kids can read to the dogs are acts of creativity, of saying, this is the world that I want to live in. Even the very small things, a little free library, 
offering your neighbor a ride. All of the things that declare we are connected, we matter to one another. All of the things that create beauty, painting or sculpting or dancing, all of the things that are the elements of the world that you want are acts of prosistence. They're acts that feed our spirits, that remind us that we are the creators, that we aren't just the ones who are trying to stem a tide, that we are in fact the river, that we are moving together toward a world that we are determined is going to be more beautiful.